Hi, my name is Lewis Kilby. I'm with eChain Technology, and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to connect your RFID system to the cloud. Now, making this very simple, actually, we have an application called eChain Connect, and I'm going to be walking you through pointing to that, but I can also show you the underlying architecture that makes that possible and makes it easy for you to transition from connecting through I guess our platform and then transitioning over to your own um, basically reading RFID data into the cloud and to start with what I'm going to do is I have our desktop reader here it makes it very easy to to explore to test to play with and it's uh, plugs into your USB port on your computer you get the beeps and I'm going to start by showing you really how everybody gets started playing with RFID and we're using UHF, Ultra High Frequency RFID, today. We've got a reader application. This is typically what comes with you know, your standard over-the-counter. This is a $250 reader. You can get them anywhere from, I don't know, you know mid-hundreds to maybe three, $350. So very affordable and easy to, to, to learn how to work with RFID. You have to have some awareness of what COM you're plugging into. In this case, it's COM3. Um, this application allows us to interact with the RFID um, reader. So we can get, and this is how we can confirm that the system is online. We basically sent a request to the reader and it responded letting us know the firmware version is 1.9. And that tells us it's all set up. So I've already configured this reader. It's ready to go. Um, on our application here, we can go to read tags, we can click inventory, and you'll hear an audible beep whenever you access or see tags. So I've got some tags here, a couple of extra uh, tags that we, that we play with basically. And you'll see, you'll hear a bunch of beeping, and you'll see the EPC IDs appearing here and a whole bunch of tag reads. So each one of those is a distinct read. You can see the frequency, the RSSI, which is basically the signal at which it's reading these. You can see that if you hold the tags in your hand, you can kill the signal and it stops reading. Even though it's still polling the reader, it's still trying to read. And the minute that it is outside of your hand, and I've set it on a metal plate off to the side here, which also can kill the signal. So we're going to stop this. And what this is great. This is where most people get started in RFID. What's happened, though, is basically you get a beep. You can see the, the data from the RFID chip itself, some information here. But at the end of the day, all you have is data on a screen. It's not really truly actionable. So how do you convert this into something that um, you know, that gives you some data capability, some sensor tracking, you, you know, basically anything. How do you do anything with this data? So I'm going to stop this. And what we've done is we've created a little application that runs on a Windows-based platform. I'm going to close this one. So to close it, we're going to disconnect, close this application. So we have an application called eChain Connect. It's a tiny little applet we wrote in, in um, Visual Studio. And when you buy it, you basically get a file with, or a folder with some files in it. Very few. It's a very small, like for instance, the executable is only 21K. It's a very small um, footprint application. And you launch it by creating a, a shortcut to the executable file. Now you can see that what you see here is a very simple um, user interface. You can name your reader. So right now it's called eChain-00-11-99. We can change this to say 11-11, or really anything. Some of the readers come with a MAC address um, as part of the reader itself. This, these particular ones do not. Our little applet is fairly intelligent. It can sense the available port that you're currently plugged into, so that can actually recognize that it's on COM3. It defaults to the highest speed available. 
And this is these two bottom here uh, fields are the key, really. What happens is, is this application is reading those all those beeps and it's consolidating those and grouping them up because you don't want to send all of that data to the cloud. You only want to send the relevant information. It's posting it to a uh, using a RESTful API and it's and we have a basically a receiving server out on the cloud and I can show you this as well. We provide this information to you for writing to your own database. So we've got the server address as to where that PHP file is. This is the service. From the update interval, we can tell it, you know, I want to read tags for 10 seconds, then every 10 seconds send just the unique reads. Or I can read it for 20 or whatever. You can put whatever interval in there you want. Um, obviously, the shorter the interval, the more data goes to the cloud and the more responsive it is. But the, uh, the longer the interval, uh, is more likely to be used in a production type environment where things aren't moving quite as, as frequently as you would expect. So we've got this set up. We're pointing to a dev environment. We're going to send data every 10 seconds. We're going to connect. Select the connect button. And you'll notice the run button is highlighted. We click run. And it's hard to tell if anything's happening. So what we do is we grab those tags as before. And the minute we pick them up off of that plate, the system starts reading those tags. So right now I'm only showing the two distinct tags. And you'll notice that these two tags are reading. Now, how do we see this data? So we're going to pull over a browser that's the eChain Technology, our website. We have a section here, IoT Connect. And in this section, we can show you a link to a put request, or I'm sorry, a get request that'll get that data. And let me show you this. So we can click here and launch the live data. And so we can see here at the top, we renamed our reader echain-00-1111. Let's stop that because that's kind of annoying. We're going to hit run again, which will stop it. All right. So we can see that there's the data that's being sent from this reader. Uh, each has the reader identifier, and then the MAC address, and then the EPC tag ID, uh, the antenna number, which is zero in this case. We're sending uh, the RSSI, which is the signal strength, and then a, basically a timestamp. Now, what we also have is that data is going directly into a database on our cloud. And this is a refreshing table. You'll see the little um, the wheel spinning and it refreshes every 20 seconds for now. And we can see the later reads are here on top. We can see we changed it to eChain 001111. And we can see that this tag ending in 8C11. Uh, we have three reads of that. We have one of this other one. There's 11.11 and D0B. So you can see the two tags. The data is going up to the cloud. And every 10 seconds, it's going to send the pair of this information up to the cloud. And I'll show you something else that's interesting. We're going to add two more tags. And these are some of the things that we specialize in here at eChain Technology. And this is Hitachi. Those really small, I call it the USPT, the ultra small package tag. I don't know if you can see here on the camera, I hope so. But one is 2.5 millimeters and the other one is 2 millimeters. Uh, this is the new one on the right. And this will help you understand the size of these next to a dime. So that gives you an idea of the size of those tags. Very small. And from what I've seen through the testing that we've performed here at eChain Technology, these are really the smallest RFID, UHF RFID tags that you can actually read with over-the-counter readers. And I'll show you this. Let's go back into our application. Let's start running it again. Now, you got to be fairly close. This is a medium-powered reader here. You can see probably the antenna under the surface of the, of the reader. And so as we get these tags a little bit closer, you can start to hear the beeps, right? 
So we're at about three to four centimeters from the surface of the reader and it's able to read these tags. And you'll notice here on the screen we've got the one that's the, the thinner one, which is 2.5 millimeter, uh, that tag is encoded with a bunch of zeros at the end. The little black one that's two millimeters squared, it actually is encoded with, uh, with another number BE9. So we can see that those are new tag reads that have come through. Now when we look at our cloud, we can see that as this database table is refreshing, we can now see these new tags appearing on the cloud. The one ending in zeros, the one ending in uh, BCE9, and just to watch it continue to change, we'll bring up the two original tags again. It'll beep a few times, and we'll count about 10 seconds or so, and then at the top of the screen we should see the two new tags re reappear. There we go. So you can see here's the reads from the two new tags appearing in the cloud. From this you can now basically trigger any kind of action because in the database it's a reader associated with an antenna port associated with a tag. This reader could be sitting at a checkout, it could be sitting at a service desk. The minute that anything with these tags on them comes by or within range and for the label tags we're talking you know, 12 to 14 feet is uh, operating range for these in this reader. So anything with that tag on it goes within you know, 10 to 14 feet of this reader. The reader will respond, it'll send it to the cloud, and it'll update your system and let you know that this, this set of assets is now in this new location. So hopefully that'll help you understand a little bit more about the, I guess what it looks like when the RFID data is going into the cloud from a very small inexpensive desktop reader. Um, kind of the last little component I wanted to talk to was the was the actual uh, server um, the file that's processing that data and loading it into the database. And this is something that we provide when you purchase this from us. It's the post RF data PHP file. And you can basically see that it references a database another PHP file which has your database access scripts data in it and it's very simple it uh, basically pulls the variables the data out of that stream coming from the RFID reader from the post request it's gonna strip it out into an array and write it into the database table as it's writing that data to the database table it's also logging that, and you can see on our website here where the log is. You see the log file, and we'll click that. And we can now see the log file. So really helpful when we're troubleshooting issues trying to connect to the cloud with the RFID data. Scrolling down to the bottom, we can see these are the latest requests coming in today's date. and writing to the cloud. So there you have it. We're gonna go into a bit more depth on this, especially the processing of the data once it gets in the system to extract or strip out all of the duplicate reads and then showing a history of movement location of the assets. So again, the important part of tracking assets or tracking things with RFID is, you know, where's it been? Where's it now? Where's the history of where it's been, the breadcrumbs? And what time did it move? Uh, what's also important is what other things were in that location. So that can be very helpful when you're trying to track down missing assets. And you can see things that came or left at the same time, or perhaps even if you have employees with badges on, uh, you can associate asset movement with employees. So again, hopefully you enjoy this and we'll be posting a few more, hopefully in the very near future. Thanks again, Lewis Kilby with eChain Technology.